It's an approach to architecture that seeks questions rather than answers. This is the Kronisch Museum Hotel, and it's a project that I started in 2010 with uh, Bettina Klein, who is the owner, and her son Clemens Klein. It's an old Gutshaus from the 1800s um, that has several histories embedded in it. And uh, what I'm going to be talking about today through this work is an idea called performance architecture. And with this idea, um, it, it's kind of an approach to architecture that seeks questions rather than answers. So it's approaching architecture more as an artist than someone trying to solve a problem. I'm trying to create some problems even. Um, and, and when someone walks into a hotel like this, which was uh, built so many years ago um, and has had several lives, we're in a town called Hessenburg, which is in the north of Germany, the northeast of Germany. And being in the northeast, it's the fo former DDR. So its most recent life before this iteration was uh, as a, a sort of state home. It was a home for many people, uh, for single mothers in particular. So it was used by many people, not just one family. Um, and when Bettina started to renovate the project, Many of the beams had rotted, the roof had started to fall in, so it was really a house that needed a lot of repair. And so this next layer of 2010, when we began the renovation and the restoration of the work, really created this other layer of time on top of those two layers. And um, we got to a certain point of the renovation, and we felt these three time periods starting to have a, a kind of conversation between one another. The older bricks juxtaposed with the newer bricks, just juxtaposed with the brand new concrete floors, all sort of came together. And we were looking to make a hotel at some point, but the first, the first step in that was to make a museum. And the, the artworks that we commissioned were all contemporary artworks um, based around the theme of the crane. And the crane is a bird that has a, a place in the local history here. They um, nest here while they're migrating from Sweden to um, North Africa in the summer. And uh, so thus the Kronisch Hotel. Um, but it really was a kind of point of departure for artists to think. We said, we don't want any pictures of cranes. We don't want any um, representations of cranes, but we want to evoke some ideas about a crane. And so what the works do is they kind of situate themselves in between the, um, in between the different time periods. So some artists have, have focused on some of the DDR pattern work and inserted some other drawings or some graffiti. So graffiti is a layer of the building that's contemporary that was done by um, the artists Hadley and Maxwell. Um, another artist, Andy Graydon, um, developed a, 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 a sound installation, which is um, you experience by moving through the space bodily. It's actually in this room, um, done with directional speakers the sound hits all of the walls, so you actually need to move from place to place in order to hear it. You can only experience it in a line rather than as a kind of fan. So you walk and pass through the sound, and then that's when you experience it. Um, I've got a, a number of works here as well, in addition to the building being um, something that I uh, developed with Bettina and Clemens. Um, what the work behind me is uh, called Slowly Sealing, and it was a work originally made for the 2013 Lisbon Triennial of Architecture. And um, it is two sofas that are facing back to back, and it's on a black carpet. And at a certain point, the black carpet starts to fill with air and slowly push these two sofas together 
so that their backs now form a bed and the two people who were separated are now sort of intimately put together, almost nose to nose. And that is really what kind of encapsulates my idea of performance architecture, is this idea that buildings are not just about the thing, but they're about the relationships that the thing produces. So two sofas that had separated you at one moment now put you in a kind of uncomfortably close position to a stranger. Um, the, the, the building itself, the installation itself is time-based. Over about 15 minutes, you feel your body weight just rotating 90 degrees and that very, very, very slow shift is something that you're just not used to experiencing. So you all of a sudden wake up um, and you start paying a little bit more attention to um, something that you ignore, you know, just the feeling of gravity on your body when it's done in a different way and in a subtle way, it just allows you to kind of understand things differently. So um, there are a number of different sort of vectors of this idea of performance architecture. Um, many of them are here. Um, the, one of the paintings uh, of the crane the only representation of a crane is done by an artist named Ward Shelley. And Ward and I um, have worked together since about 2007, and it was during a work of ours called Flatland that I uh, came up with this term to describe what we were doing, performance architecture. Uh, we uh, were commissioned to do an installation at the Sculpture Center in New York City, and we built a two-foot-wide house that was four stories tall, maybe about um, eight meters deep. And um, we lived in it for three weeks with um, four other people and we never left. The only rule was if you go into the building, you can leave at any time, but you can't get back in. So um, it, it, was, it was a way to kind of describe a building that wasn't about the object, but it was about the performance of the object. It was not not about the object, of course the object is there, but it's really a focus on the dynamic between action and thing and person and thing through an architectural space. Um, and so Ward's work is um, in the hall, he's also a painter. Ward and I have done a number of works together. We're probably best known for a piece called Reactor, which is in upstate New York. Um, it's a house that's balanced on a single point and it spins in the wind and it also shifts with the weight of the two bodies moving around inside of it. And uh, this work, um, again, was another uh, idea about a performance, about who do we become through this object. And we pay attention to who we thought we would be. So, you know, we, we make a lot of these works with an idea of a relationship in mind, say cooperation. Um, this spinning house, we thought that we were gonna move in and have to manage a kind of adversarial third thing, um, which in this case would be the wind. And um, it turned out that this house was just spinning much more easily and freely than we thought we would than we thought it would. And so there was not that kind of management of something, it was just beautiful. Um, so that really changed what actually happened in the work, which is kind of what we hope for. And this is what I mean when I um, said at the beginning, we're looking for questions more than answers. You know, the, the relationship that we wanted was just something to get us going. But then through the process of experiencing it and living in it, we, we kind of really pay attention to who we've become. And in that work, you know, um, the most beautiful place to be was just on the two balconies at either end. And in order to keep the house balanced, we had to be both on our balconies. And we just spent the 10 days sort of spinning around on our balconies mostly. We had come together in the middle of the house. Um, but if, if one person were in the middle and the other person were at the edge, it would sort of bend down towards the ground. Um, and, um, so that's 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 a kind of that's a kind of idea that is um, continuing through all of these works, and they all sort of happen at the same time. You know, I'm I'm working on a number of pieces, some with Ward, some 
uh, that are just pure writing projects, some that are uh, drawing projects, some that are uh, inflatables. And I've started to um, incorporate an idea of sound into my work. And so I'm working towards another exhibition now at the Alarma Festival in 2020, uh, which will be in December, December 13th, at the um, Silent Green installation space in Wedding, Berlin. And um, it's, a, it's a festival every year that is uh, working towards um, experimental jazz and electronic music. And so having an inflatable that is producing its sound, you know, the, 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 the work as I envision it now is a, it's a kind of just a single column lying flaccidly on the floor and a microphone hanging from the ceiling, which in this case is in a, a, a cupola and there's a domed ceiling. So right at the center point of that dome will be a microphone hanging down and a single column in the middle of the space that when it inflates, it sort of starts to go up and then reach towards that microphone. And at that moment, it'll start to have a kind of reverberation and the feedback that will be produced by its movement. And, you know, the feedback, the sound, you know, you can kind of turn the fan off and then on again, off and on again. So that it'll really produce the sonic experience as well as a spatial one. And really having those two things sort of overlapping rather than one on top of one another is, is something that I'm looking to accomplish in this, in this, in this piece. Um, so the, 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 the works are always sort of ongoing and, and feeding into one another. Works that I'll do with Ward or Clemens will feed into um, works I'm doing as a, a solo artist. Um, the, my, my role is a, a uh, an architect. Um, there are always projects that I'm exploring, a new thing here or there. And one of the rooms um, in this hotel, um, there, there was a, um, a kind of question that the, 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 it, it, it's conceptualized as an artist's retreat room. And it's a small space. We try to use as many of the original elements as we're there. So we have two walls that are in a state of decay in the hotel room. And how do you make a bed that feels good in the space um, and also not feel lost in the space, even though it's a small room? We didn't want to just put a bed in the corner and then call it a day. So we made a kind of stage out of the bed and we put this, the bed in the middle of the room and put a, a circular curtain around the bed that creates a kind of drama in the space, just a curtain in a space that seems like something's going to open up out of it, um, where you're not quite sure what it's going to be, even though you know exactly what's in there. The presence of that curtain in the middle of the space creating a kind of round volume gives that sense of anticipation that you don't know what's going to happen, what will happen next. It kind of points to a nextness even that there will be something emerging from a curtain. That's what you expect from a curtain in the middle of the room. It almost sets up a proscenium just with the bed. And so um, trying these small experiments out and then um, experiencing them for the first time in person is really what leads to new ideas. Um, these discoveries that you can only uh, find in person and in the presence of a spatial experience.